Hello, my name is Dippy Chemistry and today I'll be discussing my study, The Effects of a Clinically Feasible Application of Low-Level Laser Therapy on the Rate of Orthodontic Tooth Movement, a triple-blind, split-mouth, randomised controlled trial. Studies have shown that there is a potential for increased rates of orthodontic tooth movement using low-level laser therapy. However, the current protocol study may not be clinically feasible. We know that patients usually attend adjustment appointments every four to eight weeks. Therefore, the aim of this study was to investigate the effects of four weekly applications of low-level laser therapy on the rate of tooth movement when 150 gram distalization forces are applied to the maxillary canines over a 12-week period. This study also aimed to study any differences in anchorage loss or canine rotation. This was a triple-blind, randomized controlled clinical trial with a two-arm split-mouth design where the right side canine was randomized to either the experimental low-level laser therapy group or the sham control group. 22 subjects were selected from Sydney Dental Hospital orthodontic waiting list. These patients were 12 to 25 years old who required premolar extraction and canine retraction. Randomization was generated by using www.randomization.com. The right canine was randomly allocated to the letter A or B in a 1 to 1 allocation ratio where A was the laser and B was the sham. Blinding was achieved by allocation concealment via an enclosed internal switch on the laser unit where the laser and sham setting was set to sides A or B and this was unknown to the operator. The details were then placed in an opaque envelope and this was only opened after statistical analysis. The internal switch was closed, therefore the settings were not visible to the operator. As laser emissions do not produce light or heat, the operator and patient are blinded. The research setup consisted of the first premolars being extracted, and the maxillary arch was bonded with 022 by 028 self-ligating speed brackets with a modified NANS TPA from the second molars. Patients followed a standardized arch wire preparation lasting 24 weeks. The canine retraction setup consisted of O2O round stainless steel with ligation of the second premolars to the second molars. 6mm power arms were made out of 16 by 16 stainless steel and were placed on the canines and the first molars. And a 3mm medium nitide coil was placed to provide 150 gram force per side. This force was checked each visit with a calibrated strain gauge. Every 28 days for 3 months, study models were taken, 150 gram force was checked and low level laser therapy was applied. For the low level laser therapy, an 810 nanometer infrared gallium aluminium arsenide probe was used. This had a power of 0.2 watts and an irradiance of 1.97 watts per centimeter squared. The laser probe was directly applied at 8 points on the buccal and palatal surfaces of the canines at 10 seconds per point. This provided a total energy of 13.87 joules per visit. Impressions were scanned onto orthoanalyzer software using TRIOS scanner. The cast analysis was then performed digitally. The distance of tooth movement was measured by measuring the contact points between the distal of the maxillary canine and the mesial of the second premolar. Canine rotation was recorded by measuring the angle between the line created from the mesial and distal contact points of the canine to the mid-sagittal plane. Anchorage loss was measured by the distance of the second premolar distal contact point to the most medial contact point of the third palatal rugae. Both secondary outcomes were taken with reference to the occlusal plane, which was set from the most occlusal tip of the second molars to the most incisal tip of the central incisors. Statistical analysis was performed using linear regression modelling to account for within patient clustering. This study was performed following the consort guidelines. 21 patients completed the study with a mean age of 17.4 years. One patient was excluded due to appliance breakage between T2 and T3. When viewing the amount of tooth movement, the overall difference of tooth movement from T0 to T3 was 0.25 millimetres. This was neither statistically or clinically significant. There were no statistically significant differences at any of the 28-day time intervals for the overall three-month duration of the study. Rotation and anchorage loss were slightly higher in the low-level laser therapy group, but this was neither clinically or statistically significant.
In conclusion, no significant differences were noted in the amount of extraction space closure, canine rotation or anchorage loss with applying low-level laser therapy every four weeks at 13 joules per session. Thank you.